In this video, we continue our introduction to the different bioanalytical chemistry techniques that are important in chemical biology. Here, we're going to focus on mass spectrometry. And in this video, I'm going to give just a short introduction to mass spectrometry because we are going to be spending um, quite a bit more time in several videos on this a little bit later to go into more depth since mass spectrometry is one of the tools that has really revolutionized the field of chemical biology in the last decade or two. So given its importance, we are gonna be spending quite a bit of time on this technique, but for now we're gonna do just an introduction so that we have kind of a cohesive list of different bioanalytical techniques that we're focusing on this week. And then next week and the following week, we're gonna go in depth on the mass spectrometry as well as NMR spectroscopy. So in mass spectrometry, what the gist of it is is that we are going to ionize molecules, meaning create a formal charge on them, and then detect the mass to charge ratio of those ions. Mass spectrometry absolutely requires ions. So one of the things we'll be talking about when we get into more detail on this is how do you go about ionizing an organic molecule? So we have to ionize a molecule, be it a uh, small molecules such as cholesterol or a drug molecule or even something that's a biomacro molecule such as a protein has to be ionized it has to have a net formal charge on it and then what we detect is the so-called m over z ratio where m refers to the mass of that ion and Z refers to the charge. Most commonly, based on the way that ionization is done currently, usually that charge is going to be either plus one or minus one. Depending upon whether the experiment is run in so-called positive ionization mode that looks for positively charged ions or negative ionization mode that looks for anions rather than cations. So when we look for this mass to charge ratio, usually we have a charge of plus one or minus one. It can be though any integer value here. So you can sometimes have molecules that have a double positive charge. In other words, a plus two charge in which case um, that changes things a bit there because you'd be looking at the mass of the structure divided by two as the, as the signal that you would detect. The way that this is plotted out into a mass spectrum is that on the x-axis, we typically have our mass to charge ratio. And then on the y-axis, usually this is done normalized, meaning that the largest signal is brought up to 100%. And so this could be expressed as the percent abundance, meaning that the most abundant mass to charge ratio that you detect in that sample is going to show up as a signal that goes up to 100 on this relative scale. So drawing in something like that, that would represent our, our base peak there, our most abundant peak in the spectrum. Usually, even if you have a pure compound, there are some other signals that show up because what will happen during mass spectrometry is that during the ionization process, not all of the substance will have just a plus one charge. Some of it will have a plus two charge. Um, some of the molecule may break into fragments and so you'd be detecting those smaller fragments of the molecule as some of these lower molecular weight signals. You can also get complexes of the ion with inorganic substances such as salts. So you could end up detecting the mass um, of the ion plus a sodium ion that is complex to it. Um, so there's a variety of different things that can go on there. The end game here is that the mass spectrum will give us information ultimately about the molecular weight of the compound and the chemical formula of the compound, meaning is the compound potentially based on the molecular weight C6H12O, or is that not a possibility based on the molecular weight that we deduce from the ion that we detect? 
So it gives us some preliminary information about the structure based on this information we can deduce about the molecular weight. So what we can do with our mass spectrum in terms of applications is ideally it enables us to deduce the molecular weight of the compound and propose molecular formula that would fit that molecular weight. So we can come up with molecular formula candidates, you might say, because certainly in the case of organic molecules, you can have various combinations of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and other atoms that could add up to the same molecular weight. So that's why I say there's molecular formula candidates rather than it typically being one specific molecular formula that we are absolutely certain about. The way that we can deduce the molecular weight based on this ion information is that if we consider that the ion we're looking at we're looking at the mass to charge ratio, m over z, and we assume that we're looking at the molecular ion plus one, plus a proton to give it the positive formal charge needed to detect it. Because a common way that molecules are ionized is in acidic environments that promote acid-base reactions where the organic molecule acts as a base to pick up a proton from the acid. And so as a result, once the organic molecule which we will call M, that would be our, our organic molecule that has no formal charge and hence would be invisible in the mass spectrometer. If we place that into a solution of acid, which I'll just plug in our acid very simply in the schematic as H+, and that molecule, which I'll put a lone pair of electrons on to illustrate that it can pick up a proton from the acid, then what will result is a new bond between that molecule and the proton, and we will have a positive formal charge. So then we have an ion, and this is what's detectable by the mass spectrometer. And so we refer to this as our M plus H ion here. And so detecting the mass to charge ratio of that M plus H ion, M plus H is going to equal the molecular weight of the compound plus one, because the weight, the ma atomic mass of a hydrogen, a proton, is one. And so what we would detect in the mass spectrum for a compound if we're deducing the molecular weight is what we would actually detect in the mass spectrum experiment is the molecular weight plus one. And then from there, what we could do to determine the molecular weight is just subtract one. So here, since the actual ion in this positive ionization mode where it's picked up a proton to gain a mass of one, the molecular weight is gonna equal the ion that's detected specifically the ion's mass to charge ratio, minus one, because what we're detecting is the molecule that has picked up a proton. So we have to remove that proton, subtract it out, in order to determine the actual molecular weight of the compound prior to ionization. And with that molecular weight then, we can sort out combinations of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens that would enable that molecular weight to exist. So with mass spectrometry, we can get some preliminary information about the structure. We can usually combine that information with some of the other tools in our toolkit to help piece together the complete structure of the molecule because the information that we get about the structure, if we're working with an unknown anyway, we can get some preliminary structural information and then use some of the other tools to conclude what the full complete chemical structure is. Um, the exception to that is if you do have a standard compound that you run a mass spectrum for and you compare that to your unknown and the spectrum looks identical, that provides an additional bit of evidence that the two structures are either the same or very similar. 
because if we see the exact same pattern of how the molecule breaks into some fragments of lower mass to charge ratio and how it complexes with um, other ions, then that can be some increasingly confirmatory evidence about the identity of a compound. But very often in the field of chemical biology, we are working with structures that at the onset are completely unknown. And so based on determining the mass spectrum for a compound, we start to identify the structure, but we can't generally determine the complete structure um, unless we have standards to compare our unknown to, which is usually not the case when we're working with novel biomolecules. So we have to take it a step further with some of the other techniques. In the upcoming weeks, we're gonna get into more depth about mass spectrometry, looking at how we actually ionize molecules, what information we can glean specifically from these mass spectra, and we'll also get into what's referred to as tandem mass spectrometry, where we can strategically break a molecule into fragments to help us in determining some further structural information beyond what we've discussed here today. So stay tuned for that.